Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is December 13th, 2022, and let's get over the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So first news I want to cover today is the fact that the Russians are currently engaging on a frontal assault of Bakhmut, and the current fighting that is ongoing is at the cement factory right outside of the city. So if you look at the map here, the Russians are currently um, just outside of the city. So you can see that the city begins here and the cement factory is located right on this road that leads into Bakhmut. So the Russians are now perhaps giving up on the idea of doing encirclement and really trying to go around because they see how difficult it will be just due to the fact that there's so many hills and uh, the Ukrainians have the upper hand here. And so they've just decided to say, screw it, we're going to go in the front here and doesn't matter how many losses we're going to get, it is worth it for them. And this kind of indicates that the Russians are clearly in lack of time now because they're rushing through things. And it's been a recurring theme, I guess, since the beginning of this war. This was a special military operation that the Russians were supposed to complete and finish off in less than a week. And yet, here we are 10 months later, and they're still trying to figure out a way to end this conflict. So um, this is going to come at a very high cost for the Russian soldiers. As usual, there is no um, planning behind this. It's just telling the soldiers, go and take this part, take this part, right? There's really no planning behind this. And, you know, it's been a recurring theme, right? They've never had time to really rearm, regroup, have some sort of plan, which works in Ukraine's advantage. However, what the Russians have an advantage of is artillery and manpower due to the mobilization um, and especially the Wagner that is just not really considerate of their forces because most of them are prisoners. They're just telling them to go to the front line. If they come back uh, by desertion or just because they didn't want to obey the command, they're going to get shot. So uh, they don't have the choice. So they send so much cannon fodder here that unfortunately they get some ground. And as you can see here, uh, the last couple of days, they did manage to take some territory, uh, nothing really crazy. And I think that it can become a little bit critical as the Russians perhaps manage to take this hill that overlooks this first part of the entrance to Bakhmut on the east side, this could be critical. But I know that the Ukrainians probably know that they have the higher position here. There is a forest and it provides a lot of good cover for the Ukrainians to, um, to defend. Also, the Ukrainians just did a rotation. There's a new uh, fresh batch of soldiers that came through the city. So they're well motivated, well trained, and they are probably going to give a much tighter defense because the 93rd Brigade has given it all the last couple of months that they need some well-deserved rest. Apart from that, nothing really new. Uh, the Russians, again, are pushing on the entire eastern axis here, trying to find somewhere they can break through, but it's very, very minimal and at a very high cost for their soldiers. That's why the second wave of mobilization is going to happen in January. It's going to be the newer gift from Putin for his Russian people is going to be another ticket, one way ticket to Ukraine. So uh, that is definitely inevitable in my opinion. So that's it for the map update. Let's head into the other news. And there was a powerful explosion in Bryansk uh, that is not too far away from the Ukrainian border. Bryansk is north of Ukraine. So it is located around here, as you can see. And the explosion occurred in the town of Klinsi, where there is a military base. And so as you can see uh, in this picture, it was a massive crater that was formed following most likely a missile attack. And some people are guessing that this could be Tochka missile, a ballistic missile that hit uh, the, the base. However, according to this video, there hasn't been much damage. The target probably emits its target. And so, yeah, unfortunately, they didn't do that much damage. But uh, this indicates that Ukrainians now are not really worried about hitting Russian bases in almost the last week or so, almost on a daily basis. Uh, a lot of airfields, air bases, uh, military bases were hit by the Ukrainian forces. So it kind of shows that there is a lot more confidence in hitting Russian military assets within Russia. So that's really good news. So there was a poll that came out of the Kiev Independent today, and it indicates that 85% of Ukrainians believe that a uh, total victory in Ukraine means that uh, liberation of all the territories. So that includes Crimea and Donbass. So that pretty much means that the overwhelming majority of Ukrainians believe that a victory can only be considered a victory if Ukraine takes back all of its territory pre-2014 
um, borders. So this really indicates that Ukrainians will fight until the end. And also indicates the, um, here on the, the bottom note here that 96% that are in favor um, are ready to endure financial difficulties for three to five years should this victory result as well in Ukraine, in Ukraine becoming a member of the European Union. I think that Ukraine has proved um, its worth. It's proved that it is a reliable partner, that it deserves to be part of the European Union, a Western partner. And overall, that they given the, the Ukraine people gave the ultimate sacrifice since their lives for Western values. So um, definitely Ukraine will be one of the most important uh, assets within the European Union once it's admitted, once it's admitted 100%. Another really good news uh, coming out today from the United States is that the Biden administration is finalizing plans to send Patriot missile defense systems to Ukraine. That could be announced as soon as this week. And this is according to two U.S. officials and a senior administration official. So this could very well mean that by the end of this year, or maybe early in January of next year, Ukraine could get some Patriot missile defense systems. Uh, how many uh, are going to be sent out? It's still to be, uh, you know, uh, to be known. I am expecting perhaps less than a dozen, uh, just as they did with the HIMARS systems. Uh, it would really surprise me if they give more than that, but it's still better than nothing and better late than ever, right? The Ukrainians were asking for those systems for a very long time. And unfortunately, you know, they're only given now, but again, better late than ever. And I'm sure they're, they'll be doing a really good job of protecting Ukrainian skies once it's all confirmed and they'll be in Ukraine. So, um, hopefully that'll be the case. And this is more of world news worth worthy, but I thought it was really, um, interesting news for all of us is that there was a massive breakthrough today in nuclear fusion. There was this announcement today by the scientists that have been working for the last couple of decades to imitate what is going on right now in the sun, and that is nuclear fusion. And so they uh, reported that uh, today that they managed to produce more energy from the fusion experiment than they had to put in for creating this uh, energy, for producing this energy. So essentially, as I've said, nuclear fusion is described as the holy grail of energy production. It is the process that powers the sun and other stars. It works by taking pairs of light atoms and forcing them together. And so this fusion releases a lot of energy. And this is opposite of what um, is currently ongoing our nuclear power plants, which is nuclear fission. And this is where heavy atoms are split apart. And this uh, splitting apart of atoms creates and releases energy. But however, this creates a lot of a nuclear waste and it needs to be uh, stored safely because it's very dangerous and radioactive. Um, and so this nuclear fusion <clears throat> produces far more energy and only small, small amounts of short-lived radioactive waste and most importantly doesn't produce greenhouse gas emissions. So this is massive news for the entire planet. And hopefully, you know, in the future, when Ukraine wins this war, it will be able to profit uh, from this technology and build, uh, you know, nuclear fusion power plants where, you know, it'll be able to replace, you know, the lost um, energy capacity uh, in Ukraine that was destroyed by the Russians and perhaps remodernize the energy grid of Ukraine through the, the, the construction of these nuclear fusion facilities. I think that would be great. And for any other country, right, that is... Uh, deeply in lack of, you know, uh, alt alternatives for uh, energy production. So overall, this is really great news for the entire planet. It indicates as well that, you know, we can do wonderful things as humankind when we work together towards the same goal, towards, you know, making life better for all of us instead of fighting wars over, uh, you know, personal ambitions. And we just need to set our egos aside and really compromise on things and work together to really achieve amazing things. And we have been able to do that. But uh, unfortunately, there's, a, you know, small amounts of, of people that only care about their own self-interests and always put sticks in the wheels of uh, humankind development. So that's that. Uh, I have two videos I want to show you guys today. So first video today is um, more lunacy within the Russian media. And today they are saying that Polish, the Polish people will be attacking Kaliningrad imminently. So let's see what they have to say. So we need to produce more powerful and more modern weapon systems, given the inevitability of a clash with NATO in the near future, says this guy. Inevitability? 
inevitability, says this guy, question mark. Practically, yes. Armed conflict with NATO, question mark. Yes, all this is going on. We're talking about the spring period. And the host asks, World War III? Nuclear, question mark. Not nuclear, not necessarily. If Poland goes to Kaliningrad, God forbid, or anywhere else. <laughs> Poland is openly preparing for that, so the probability of this conflict, in my estimation, is high. So they're even getting the Russian people ready for you know, a potential armed conflict with Poland. Uh, we all know that this is all bogus. Uh, Poland has no interest in um, fighting Russia right now or directly engaging with Russia. However, this really you know, is an interesting point because I truly believe in a Russian defeat. And once the Russians will be defeated, there'll be so many territories that are going to be rearranged, including Kaliningrad in Moldova with Transnistria, um, you know, the islands close to Japan, uh, Chechnya, Dagestan, Georgia. There's so many areas, Finland with Karelia, that was taken by the Russians illegally during, uh, you know, World War II. So, you know, there's a lot of territories that Russia is going to have to give up. And I think a lot of countries right now are looking at that. And, you know, really, really looking forward for that happening. And we've also seen a very large distancing from India and China in regards to that, uh, because they don't want to be tied with Russia anymore, right? They somewhat say to Russia that, oh, we're kind of with you, but they're only interested in buying cheap Russian resources. That's all they're interesting, interested in. And that's what Russia is good for them. Before, when they saw Russia as this really large power that, you know, that had to be respected, now they have no respect for them to the point that India even canceled, you know, a major meeting with Putin. Uh, I think it was last week or something like that. Uh, it kind of clearly indicates that nobody wants to be close to Russia right now. Uh, and instead, what's going to happen with the eventual collapse of Russia is a clear, in my opinion, um, re- uh, reformation, or I guess uh, restructuring of the territory of Russia for all of the territories that illegally took away from many different uh, countries. So this is just the last video to show you why right now the advances are so slow. Uh, Rasputitsa is a thing. Uh, obviously, the weather is really muddy. You can see that the Ukrainian forces right now are advancing you know not so fast because you can see how difficult the terrain is everything is muddy it's cold uh there is some snowfall but then it melts uh overall just uh, the weather is not uh good enough for fast advances from both sides and that's why we haven't seen these crazy you know movements as we've seen back in early september to november just really really terrible terrain for for mobility and uh, you know high movements and mobility for the Ukrainian forces, so uh, really interesting video to see. You know how like this BMP just just kind of drags itself through this mud and just sinks slowly within all this black soil. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. So that's it, guys. Thank you for your support. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you really enjoy my content. I try to upload very regularly. Uh, like my video if you enjoy my content and leave me a comment about, uh, you know, what you think about the comments of these Russians about Poland or what I'm really interested in the comments about what I mentioned in regards to, you know, countries potentially taking back some Russian territories once this war is over and Russia is going to be in a very weak position uh, to, um, to negotiate. So let me know about that. And again, a huge thank you for all my supporters. I will see you in the next video.